Look, listen, look. An operating system is like your personality. What your operating system says about you. When I go on a first date, the first question I ask is, what operating system do you use? And if she doesn't say Linux, it's not wife material, guys. I mean, I don't use Linux myself either, but um, shop. And if someone says Windows, yeah. I mean, to the men, not to the women. I would never edit or cut this part out. So let's deep dive into all the operating systems and it's fun little quirks, guys. We gonna discuss Windows, we gonna discuss Macs, we gonna discuss Linux, and then some weird little operating system no one talks about. This video is sponsored by Chat LLM. Okay, so you probably use ChatGPT. And if you don't, what are you doing? But each LLM has its own strength. Gemini is more creative. ChatGPT03 is better at math. Claude is better at coding. Now I used to be a complete dummy and pay for each service separately until I discovered Chat LLM Teams. The best part about this is for $10, really only $10 a month, you get access to all the LLMs. Like ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, Grok, whatever you can name. This includes AI video and image generation models like V. Runway, Dolly, basically anything AI you can imagine. And then you get extra goodies like Humanize, which is to humanize AI-generated text. Look, I don't know if you've ever been to school or submitted AI-generated work to school. Of course you haven't. This is literally your get out of jail card. You get Code LLM, an AI code editor bundled in. Chat LLM also includes Deep Agent, a very powerful general purpose agent that helps you build full apps, websites, AI agents, and even other AI apps. Don't be a dummy like me and waste hundreds of dollars. Go visit chatllm.abacus.ai or click the link in the description and in the pinned comment. Microsoft Binbos. So Windows was actually um, uh, MS-DOS. By the way, I don't know if you know this, but the DOS and MS-DOS stands for Dirty Operating System. That's not even a joke, I'm being for real. Actually, some computer company called Seattle Computer Products made QDOS, which stood for Quick and Dirty Operating System. And then my boy, of course, the good-hearted, kind soul, Mr. Bill Gates was like, give me that and rebranded it and then sold it to IBM. Even IBM was like, cool, whatever, don't tell me where you got it from, just give me what I need. If you didn't know, DOS is just freaking letters on a screen. Like, this is the entire operating system. You only get a terminal, nothing else. But then someone was like, why don't we make this operable through a mouse and Windows And guess what they called it? Windows! So there was Windows 1.0, then 2.0, and then with 3.0, Microsoft started cooking. And then there was Windows 95. We had a wallpaper. We had Internet Explorer. And you're not gonna believe the best-selling feature, a start menu. Then there was Windows 98, which released in 1998. And then there was Windows ME, which released in 2000, like your boy. Then Microsoft threw MS DOS into the bin and then made a completely new Windows XP. XP was so beautiful. <laughs> Okay, it looks a little toyish, but XP was one of the, if not the most successful operating system of all time. You use it, I use it, it was amazing. It gave us one of the most famous images of all time, which was shot in 1996, by the way. That was 30 years ago, bro, what? It was taken by Charles O'Rear, who was on his way to visit his then-girlfriend, who later became his wife. Aww. Who knew Bliss had a little bit of romance to it. Windows XP also lasted like six years, which is actually not a lot, but at the time, it seemed like an eternity because Microsoft was pumping out operating systems every few months. So after six years came Vista. People love to dunk on Vista, and rightfully so, because at the time it was terrible. But it gave us Windows Arrow, which I think it deserves credit for that. Vista was one of the most beautiful UIs I've ever seen. Change my mind. You actually might, because I do love liquid glass. Also, some of the betas had amazing UIs, which you can check them out in my full in-depth video. Shameless plug. I don't really care, it was a good video. Vista unfortunately changed a lot of things under the hood, so people never really fully appreciated it until Windows 7. Windows 7 was also beautiful, by the way. Amazing sounds, amazing UI, amazing everything. If I become richer from this video, I want to build the fastest Windows 7 PC, which unfortunately involves an RTX 3090 Ti. But it just goes show you how long Windows 7 was supported. Go to the operating system, go to everything. And then we had Windows 8. Might as well skip this. I only say two things. It got rid of Windows Arrow, so hashtag boycott Windows 8 and everything that's not Arrow. I like glass and see through things. That was not supposed to be dirty. I meant in the operating system. So then we had Windows 10. Now, I was quite sentient when Windows 10 came out, so now people are jerking off to it, like, oh my god, just perfection Windows 10 was. But back in the day, it was considered utter sh People hated the UI, people didn't like Cortana, people wanted Windows 7 back. But then Microsoft quelled things by claiming that it was the last operating system that they were gonna release. That was a lie. Actually though, Microsoft did update it frequently, and it did make huge changes. Like, Windows 10 in 2015 is not even close to what it's like today. But alas, Microsoft couldn't keep it in their pants and they released Windows 11. Now you all know how hated Windows 11 is. I personally kind of like it once it's installed, but the system requirements are utterable Also, games run slower on it because of the bloatware, so now that I'm saying this out loud, actually, I don't like Windows 11. I like the Windows 11 UI. It's called uh, Mica, I think. Also, Microsoft, please copy Apple and do some liquid error And apparently, Windows 12 is on the horizon, so if they release it soon, this video is gonna look hella outdated, so I hope it doesn't happen soon. So what does Windows say about you? I really think, especially recently, that Windows has like zero personality. <laughs> Like, it's the default, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, you use Windows, of course. Like, I mean, I use it as well, but I'm mostly a Mac user. Like, 
of the, this iPad is not mine. I have Windows on there for emergencies, but there happen to be a lot of emergencies, so. So Mac OS actually used to be called uh, System Software. It's an app name, I guess. So there was System Software 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 6. And yeah, this always had a keyboard, mouse, and a GUI and all that shit, but honestly, it was boring as hell, so I don't really want to talk about it anymore. System Software 7 is where they started calling it Mac OS. So there was Mac OS 7, 8, and then 9. However, in the 90s, Apple was just chilling and making no innovations. Imagine in the 90s, we depended on Windows for innovation. So what they did was they bought Steve Jobs' company called Next Computers and basically just used that operating system. So Mac OS 9 and Mac OS 10 are not really related at all. Now this is where the nostalgia begins. How Windows had Arrow, Mac OS had Aqua. Think water, blue, liquid. Steve Jobs said he wanted to make an operating system, you want it to lick. And honestly, tell me that doesn't look like a tasty piece of candy, you just want to like, like. This is also where Apple's little cat finish began. Is catfish a thing? I hope it's not. We had Mac OS Cheetah, Puma, Jaguar, Panther, which Panther was awesome by the way. You had this like brushed aluminum look everywhere. It was beautiful. Then Tiger, which was like peak aqua. Tell me you don't want to lick this. No, tell me. No, say it. Because that's actually kind of weird. By the way, Apple was doing like these light transparency effects since like Mac OS Cheetah. That's why the computers ran like shit, but that's besides the point. Then there was Leopard, Snow Leopard, Lion, Mountain Lion, and then they ran out of cats. I don't know how they didn't see this coming, but... So then they decided to name things after California landmarks, which I'm not from California, so I had no idea. It means nothing to me. You would think that shifting from cat names to California names is when they would switch up the UI, but Maverick still had the Aqua theme, and then they dropped it for this flat design. I'm not even gonna go through them, because honestly, it's just so boring and bland, and we still have it to this day. After Mac OS 10.15, Apple just started calling them new numbers, like Mac OS 11, 12, all the way up to 15, and then they just skipped to 26. Now 26 is... Nice. We got this liquidy wallpaper, we got colored folders, we got transparency galore. It's actually got so much personality and pizzazz. You can probably tell that I grew up with Mac OS, especially the Aqua era, which I did, I'm not ashamed of it. Now between Aqua and Arrow, what is my favorite aesthetic? It's hard to tell, it's hard to tell. Some days I'll lean Aqua, some days I'll lean Arrow. I'm not gonna think about this every day, but... Let us discuss in the comments, do you like Aqua better or Arrow better? Now Mac OS, especially in the 2000s, used to be far more stable than Windows. Like, I know y'all like XP, I like it too, but comparing XP to like Panther, Panther was just hella stable. Although nothing in the 2000s worked on a Mac because it had like a 1.8% market share. That's crazy, Linux and Mac OS had about the same market share in the early 2000s. Like, it was so rare that people were preaching Mac OS in the 2000s like they preached Linux today. By the way, Mac OS's market share now is like 4%, so it's not like a huge jump, but it feels like a big jump. I'll tell you the word, it's in the zeitgeist more. Yeah. No fancy words. This conveniently brings us to iOS, which actually initially wasn't even called that. Let me take you back to the dark ages, and by that I mean 2006. YouTube videos still look like this, we still watch MTV, and smartphones still had buttons. I know some of you kids are like, oh, what a wonderful time. It was not. It was not. So then Apple took macOS and then shrunk it down to fit into an iPhone. And you might think, wow, the full macOS on an iPhone. That means all these desktop apps on this tiny little device. Then you are wrong, because we still don't have that. So we had iPhone OS 1 and 2, which by the way, iOS updates used to be paid back then, like 20 bucks. And on top of that, they didn't have basic features like copy and paste. Nor was there an app store. It came with like 16 apps, so entertain yourself with that. They started calling it iOS since like iOS 4. That's because that's when the iPad came out, so it's not iPhone OS anymore. iOS 7 was like the major change to this flat minimalist And in all honesty, that's pretty much what we have to this day. Like from iOS 1 to 6, there's like massive changes. And from like iOS 7 to 26, there's supposed to be nothing. iOS 7 is like iPhone 5S, by the way, which is still hella usable. But again, big fan of the liquid glass on iOS 26, Apple finally brought a change. These days, however, visually and under the hood, macOS and iOS are pretty much the same thing, so. So what about the competition? So now we gotta talk about Android since it's the most popular operating system on the planet. I personally have not used Android in like a decade. I had a Moto X and I hated it. So Android actually started off as a digital camera OS. Let me, hold on a minute. Show you. Okay, so if you're too young, because generally some of you might actually be too young, we used to have cameras separate from our phones. Like this one right here, because we didn't have smartphones, so. Of course, that didn't work out, so Google bought Android and told them to make a phone OS. So they made one with like buttons and and then the iPhone came out and they were like, we gotta copy that. In all honesty though, Android used to be hella customizable back in the day. Like it had pull down notifications and an app store from day one. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but iOS did not have these things. This is also where Android's little desert fetish started, which it's uh, better fetish than cats, I guess. I mean, no, no, I, I like it. it. It's quirky. We had Cupcake, Donut, Froyo. Wait, what the hell's a Froyo? Oh, frozen yogurt. Is this like some millennial slang? I didn't know. Gingerbread, honeycomb, blah, 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 and then Kit Kat. Now I use this bear, bruv. It looked hella bougie, especially back in 2014, but my Moto X was hella buggy, so. 
Then we have lollipop, marshmallow, nougat, nougat. I don't really know how to say that. I don't know what dessert that is. Oreo pie, and then just eight or ten. Although internally they still name it dessert names, which I think they should name it that publicly. So I don't use Android personally, nor have I in a long time, so I don't really know much about it. But the latest Android is Android 16, and it's called Baklava. So do whatever you want with that information. Also, Android is based on the Linux kernel, which brings us to. Linux has an... Actually, I learned a lot just researching this video. So in 1983, Richard Stallman envisioned a free OS instead of the trillion dollar corporations that Apple and Microsoft became. He created the GNU project, which had all the components of the operating system except for the kernel, which is arguably the most important part of so. In 1991, Linus Torvalds, a Finnish university student, wrote the kernel and created Linux. The name and logo was inspired by a character from the Arvin animation series, which, side note, I love those little claymation movies. They were a big thing in Europe. If you're American, you probably don't know. The official story behind this name is Torvalds claims to have contracted a rare disease called penguinitis after being gently nibbled by a ferocious fairy penguin during a visit to a zoo in Australia. He jokes that the condition makes you stay awake at night just thinking about penguins and feeling great love towards them. This is such a dad joke, oh my god. And as you probably know, Linux is not an operating system. It's a kernel with different operating systems or distros. The first ever Linux distro or distribution was SLS Linux or Soft Landing Linux System in 1992. Then Debian came out in 1993. I don't know if you've heard of it. I have. Then Red Hat Linux in 1994. A lot of these were server focused, so. I mean, Linux in general is like server focused, so. Another thing is that throughout the 90s and the early 2000s, you used to get live CDs, which is hilarious. So you'd insert the CD, boot off of it, and essentially you had a full OS running off of the CD. It was a great way to test drive the operating system, I guess. This is apparently what Ubuntu did as well in 2004, and it became wildly popular. Well, wildly popular in Linux terms, not like actually popular. Arch Linux was released in 2002, Linux Mint was released in 2006, but throughout most of its life, it's been shelved to a service and not your desktops. Until now. Well, by now, especially with corporate backing from Valve, you can run a lot more Windows software on Linux. Sometimes it's better than Windows, which is crazy. Especially for gaming, if you're like super hardcore, like 3 extra FPS will make you nut, then Linux actually might be the move. There are specific gaming-focused distros like Nobara, CatchOS, Garuda, and it's all free. You don't really pay for Linux, unlike Windows. So apart from the big three, are there any more operating systems? I mean, there were. So in the 90s, there was BIOS, which this is an interesting story. So when Apple was in talks to buy a new operating system, and they ended up buying Next Step, they were also in talks to buy BIOS. Now, BOS was created by former Apple executive John Louis Gasset, with side note, Steve Jobs and John Louis, like, arch enemies. But apparently, John Louis, in his ego, said $275 million, take it or leave it, and then Apple bought Next for $429 million. They paid more for your competition. That's actually a bit rude. This is the worst. <laughs> It's a cool little OS though, they had their last release in 2000 because they shut down in 2002, but Michael MJD made a full video going through it, so if you want to check it out. There was the CPM operating system in the 80s, which was just like a terminal. There was OS2, which was developed by Microsoft and IBM, but it isn't Windows, so. Even Michael MJD hasn't used it, so it never really caught on. There was Palm OS, which in the 90s apparently you had these things called PDAs, which used to do like email and web browsing on the go, but it wasn't a phone. So yeah, Palm OS was for these little personal digital assistants or PDAs. There was also Symbian OS, which was like an iOS Android competitor before iOS and Android existed, so. This ran on basically all Nokia phones. It was quite popular. It didn't really have an app store though, and it was really insecure. Like viruses were rampant. There was BlackBerry OS for BlackBerry phones, but that died out with BlackBerry, so. And then there's extremely obscure stuff like Amigo OS, but the last OS to discuss is Windows Phone. Windows Phone was actually such a vibe. It actually started off as Windows Mobile, and just for reference, it had this Frutiger era aesthetic in spades. It was replaced with Windows Phone, and despite Microsoft's massive corporate backing, it failed, and it was discontinued in 2015. And yeah, that was all the operating systems I could think of. That was actually a lot. So let me know in the comments if I missed any, and don't forget you can join my membership to get access to my Discord, so please like and subscribe. Bye!